dear students, welcome you to your 2020, that is 2020 uh, class of um, uh, 20, 2020. I mean, uh, this is your subject for visual arts. My name is Peter, my surname is Kewowo, and I will be your tutor throughout the year of uh, 2020. That means uh, with anything that have to do with visual arts, please um, do not ever hesitate to contact me. Always make use of my cell phone number that uh, I will give later. And all otherwise, you can use my email that is appearing on your screen now. Okay. Now, before we get into the details of the whole presentation, I would like to, to us to go through the contents of your subject. Some of you are using the Kindle, some of you are using the, the, the hard copies. And some of the hard copies uh, are having up to six models, while some, especially for DPP, are having only up to four uh, units. So that's why this uh, whole presentation, it's uh, put together and it covered both the DPP and the TJPE um, students. So what is covered in the study guide that uh, the IOL have, star, uh, uh, have provided for you? We have got unit one, which is about explaining some basics of uh, visual art perspectives. And we have unit two, which is uh, examine and demonstrate how to draw picture. This specific unit, actually, it's where you learn about how, and also some demonstrations on how to, 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 to draw pictures. And unit three, which is about clarifying and then demonstrating how to make models. Unit four, it's about illustrations, clarifying, constructing, and and collage work. Unit five, it's about uh, discussions on the aspects of teaching and assessing art creations. Unit six, which is the last unit, it's about examining the teaching, learning activities, and materials of visual arts for grade one. Uh, unit one, which is about explanations on some basics of uh, visual art perspectives. We start with 1.1, uh, the aim of art education in pre primary schools. In other words, what are the outcomes? What do, I, what do we want to achieve with this specific uh, subject of visual arts in pre primary schools? And uh, as we all know art is a very undervalued subject in our communities and uh, questions like why learners should do, do art are common and have become now frequent questions that uh, even some of you students, uh, uh, your community or family members would ask if you tell them that one of your subjects is visual arts. They want to know what it's all about if it's not only about drawing and so, so on. So if somebody asks what why Lena should do art, you can give any answer that you can think of uh, according to what we have studied so far. Otherwise, in a short answer, we can say art is all about expression, it's about communicating, it's about creativity. But therefore, before we, we address the, the aims of art education, there are some uh, that we, we need to look at what art is in its definition. Um, on the slide says we follow mainly the learner-centered approach in art education. Now, what is a learner-centered uh, approach in art education? In this specific sense, or this specific approach, we refer to learner as the one that have to engage more. You need to empower your learners, you need to empower your students, you need to to act as a facilitator, as a guider, and not necessarily as a dictator. So they need to take the ownership of this specific uh, learning. So you can provide them with materials. If that's the case, maybe they are painting, you provide them with paints and, uh, and papers where they are, they are painting on and, and the brushes. But then all the creativity, all the thoughts, all the ideas, you are not really telling them that they should do ABC, but you will leave that room that they should 
do things that they, they, they feel like doing and they should express themselves in a such. So, um, defining the concept of art. Through the history of art, there have been many definitions for arts, but today people are willing to admit that it's not easier to define a concept as wide as this one of art. We can say that art is a form and art is a content. I think that is the most important part of the whole definitions of art that you should pay attention to. Why do we say art is a form? It's obvious. It's because the artist use some mediums and it use art materials and they use the elements of art and the principles of art to create a specific art piece or an image with an attractive kind of sense in it. So it's a form because the artist need to use the medium materials and applies the elements and the principles of art to create something with appeal. We say art is also a content. What is a content in general? Already we have looked, when we just started with this presentation, we have looked at the contents of what is in that specific study guide of yours. The content is in the same sense that the content in this form, the art piece that was created with the mediums and materials and uh, 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 with the application of elements of art, it carries a message. So in this sense, content that we are talking about, we are referring to the meaning and a message that the artwork is all about. That's why it says that the inspiration of all the products come from the environment which the artist lived in, meaning that artists always do or they express themselves depending on the situation they are, they are going through or they have observed or anything that to do with their specific the environments that where they live in. Art education, the subject art falls within the aesthetic area of learning and has a definite thematic links in the other subjects or with the other subjects. You cannot teach art in isolation. That means that this art project for the week must have links with the theme of the week. For example, if your theme for the week is my house, the theme you can use boxes to construct a building, that means you provide, you have to provide materials that uh, will go hand in hand with the specific theme that we are teaching and the materials that learners have all that will be able to use to, to, to create uh, that specific uh, theme that, that you are teaching or your theme of the week. Okay, there are now different disciplines of art. In this specific uh, uh, area we are looking at accept apart from visual arts, what other art forms are they? Here we are given about four of them, we have got the visual arts that you need to learn, uh, learners express themselves in drawing and pattern making. We have got uh, music, which is also a different uh, discipline of art. It's about uh, singing and body percussions. We have got dancing, which is uh, the elements of body awareness, uh, levels, flows, and forces. And also we have got drama, that is uh, uh, role playing, uh, acting, and all those kind of uh, performances and then also learners have to learn how to appreciate how to evaluate all art forms or creative art forms that's why you see that appreciating art it's also part of um, of, um, of, of of the disciplines of art so you need to know these uh, different types of disciplines and you also need to know visual art what does entails Visual, uh, I mean, music, art, what is it about? Dance, what is it about? Uh, drama, what is it about? So that you know that when you are talking about visual arts, you should refer to the practices that are made, all that are operated within under the visual art uh, at, at, at the spring. And the value of uh, visual art education. What is the quality of art? Why should, when you think of a visual art education, what is important about it? There are many values of visual art education in your book. And here we have highlighted only a little. And throughout this presentation, wherever you see that condi word with the dots continuing, it means that this is just a little of more information that you still need to find within your book. 
Therefore, one of the value of visual art education is to develop a positive attitude towards the visual art and, all, and a will to express themselves through artistic activities. What does that mean? That one of the qualities of or the importance of visual art education is that learners develop a positive, they start liking visual art as a subject. And also, in a way, it gives you a will. They feel free to express themselves while using uh, the artistic activities, whatever activity that you can give them. It can be a pain, depending upon their families or wild animals, depending on your theme. The other um, the value is also to it discovers and develop the creative and the expressive ability through the use of several aims, materials, techniques, and a variety of activities. So like I mentioned before that these values are a lot. They are all coming from your visual art book, the one that you are provided with uh, by IOL. You don't need to Google about these things. You just need to open your book and you find the specific information in your book and look at it and read more about it. The aims in art education what do we want to achieve with this specific uh, uh, lesson in our, our pre-primary schools and in junior schools? We want learners to un or we want to enable learners to contribute to the development of culture that is now in Namibia. We want to promote wide intercultural understanding. We want to promote cultural awareness and appreciation. We want to stimulate learner's imagination and creativity. Again, the Kondi word is coming, that means read more in your book. Now there are universal general aims of art education, which includes that art stimulates creativity. What does art do? It stimulates creativity. Creative thing is therefore when a learner can create an image of something in or from his or her own head that is something that does not exist before, or cannot see, as long as the learner is able to do, to come up with a specific image or an object without copying or looking at it, it's, we, 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 we count that as part of the learner's creativity as being stimulated and is able to, to execute. And art also develop self-expression through doing the objects, through drawing, but children of a younger age don't really through looking forward or from things that they are not going through. Their paintings, the colors they are using, they are all about self-expression based. Also, um, uh, uh, art provides visual expression in a way in which learners express themselves uh, uh, their ideas and th through visual symbols, that meaning by putting images on paper with pencils and all that, again, learners are expressing themselves. They are telling a story about what they are going through or what they have uh, observed or what they are imagining. Art uh, also uh, provides a skill of hand-eye training. Art education is considered to be a useful training ground in which acquisition of motor skills. That means, I mean, let's say if they Artist, you ask the artist to draw an apple. I mean, a learner to draw an apple. That means they will be looking at an apple. That is now they are in practice, and they are able to transfer that specific image with a pencil and a paper. Uh, and a paper. And also, it's exercise on its. It's an exercise on its own because um, this, it involves movements doing this, and also a connection between the eye and the hand to be able to transform that or to transfer that specific image on the paper. It also contributes on us and culture. The identity of the young learner is linked with his or her culture and it cannot be separated. Like we mentioned before that it's always, art is always coming from where the artist, or from the artist environment, where the learner is growing up. If you ask them to draw their houses, it's obvious you will see that they will be drawing more of the houses that they live in. And if there are four to five, maybe from different uh, groups of tribes, you will see that uh, because not all tribes uh, have got the same uh, homesteads or the same style of building their houses, you will see that you will have also up to four different uh, houses. I mean, this is all coming from the learner's uh, um, environment. Uh, it involves now the different stages of development because we are talking about learners of young age, 
as young as two to four, four to seven, and so on. Now, in your book, these stages of development are more than just two that are given here, but you are encouraged to read more on those specific uh, stages. One of the, 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 the stage of development is uh, scribbling uh, a stage that is now it's counted between the, the, the learners who are two to four years old. And uh, most observers of these children believe that learners engage in scribbling not to draw a picture of something. Therefore, there are four stages again within the scribbling uh, uh, um, stage, which is disordered, that is now in the manner, the manner in which their image appears. They are disordered, wrongtudinal. You see lots of secular there. Ask a learner or a child at your house who is maybe two or three or four to draw you something, and you will be able to test whether the, the, the theory here is wrong or somehow prove you right, which I think I have tried it, and I think um, it was well researched. Uh, the other stage is a pre pre-somatic stage or symphoric stage. This is now the stage between uh, of learners between four to seven years old. Around three to four years of age begin to combine the circles in one or more lines in order to present a human figure. That is when you start now. They are able to, they are not really drawing a human as they are, but they are able to tell that the head should look like this, the arm should come out like this, and they can put those fingers like uh, looking like a chicken, chicken fingers there. So it's that specific area that we are talking about. And like I mentioned before, wherever you see a lead flag, those lead dots, that condi word, it means find that specific information in the book and read more. Not the other book other than the book that your institution, which is IOL, have provided for you. So this presentation was uh, composed from that specific book. Unless you have exhausted it, and only then you can... Uh, Google and other stuff, but only if you know really what you are looking for out there. Okay. The eye of the beholder phrase. It's a phrase that is used and many different. And here we are trying to go a little bit deeper in its meaning. This characteristic follows from the previous one. Learners will predict places according to their feelings about these things rather than how they actually look. A learner might throw bars. I hope we all know bars. At our windows, we call them trials. That is the bars we are uh, referring to, not the other ones. In front of their windows, if they feel they are in prisoner in their own houses. So it's just a form of expression. You look at the image and you, you see that specific type of um, drawing uh, made. Sometimes that is what the, the learner is trying to, 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 to feel. Maybe they feel like prisoners in their own houses. Maybe they are not allowed to go out. But at some point it could mean maybe security purposes. They feel somewhere, somehow, in a way, the house needs to, to, to be equipped in a such a way that they feel protected when they are in the house. We live in a world of cartoons and it influences other moods and emotions. Therefore, the young drawer uses color not to show the picture as it is in real life. When young learners are drawing, when they are using those color pencils, their idea is not to, to say, no, leaves are green, so I should leave, uh, make the leaves of a tree green. But they do that because they do not they don't do that because they cannot yet draw realistically, but they do that just to express a specific feeling or emotion that they are going through. So that the feeling is the one that directs the color that the student uses. Because sometimes, let's say a child who is two, maybe does not even know the difference between color green and blue and yellow in the so forth, but they are able to use them. That means the feeling within is the one that um, directing them to use those specific colors. Color symbolisms mean, means our responses to color are not just biological, they are also influenced by color associations. I think the, here you should just do a little bit of uh, self-studies. Eh? The emotional reaction of colors. You can use the symbolic or the emotional meaning of color to enhance certain aspects in your artwork. 
So you can use color to describe the appearance of uh, an object like a red color, but you can also use it to create a certain emotion. Mm -hmm. Why do you like red, perhaps? Because you should like red for you to go and buy uh, uh, a red car. So that is the connection between the emotion and the car itself, in short. Also, we use colors for psychological effects. Psychological effects, uh, this uh, mystic believes that we emit a color glow or owl which is thought to affect the state of a person's health and spirituality. Color or personal color uh, preferences not only have we inherited color, uh, cultural association, but we also respond to colors in our individual ways. I think this specific theory, you just need to read it, you will understand it better if you read it on your own, uh, because it's a theory on its own that you just need to, to, to read, and as you read, you understand and be able to relate to yourself and how you react to colors. Huh? Elements of arts, principles, elements of arts and principles of visual arts. In other words, the elements and the principles of art to create an artwork. As we have mentioned in, in, in the earlier slides, that we say art is a form. Why? Because it involves materials and it involves mediums and the, one, the, the, the artists have to apply the what? The elements of arts. These are the elements that we are referring to. So, to create an artwork, you must build it. And these building blocks, the building blocks that we are referring to are now the one that are known as, or addressed as elements of art. We use, this building block that we use are called the elements of art. For example, one of the elements of, uh, of art, it's a line, so one is color, another one is shape, and then you have got a form, you have got texture, you have got space, you have got value or tone, you have got direction. Now, no, this value here is not now, is no more the value or the quality. This one is a value referred to a specific amount of color on how it's applied. And in the red, like I call them a red flags because those are very important information because they for me that you should read and understand what each element is and its function in an artwork. Find out what is, what what is the line? What is it about? What does it function within the artwork? Find out the element of color. What does it play? What role does it play on an art drawing? Shape and all that you need to read these elements one by one. Color, find out what it is and what it functions in the artwork. Also, with these elements, we give shape and form to experience or uh, a feeling. Remember, in the beginning of this unit, like I, this one is what I have stated before that uh, why we referred to art as a form and as a content. Okay, and there are also the principle of art. Principle of art are a lot. I think there are about 12 in your book, in your specific book, IOL book. One of them is pattern, emphasis, variety, and unity. These are just a few of a lot that are in your book. That's why it says find out more of this principle of art in your book and understand what each element is and its function on the artwork. I think there, instead of saying element again, because it was stated already uh, 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 above here, I think here you might just replace that word with uh, with a principle. It must be an error there. But you need to find out to find this uh, uh, um, principle of arts in your book. They are there and they are described. So you need to know what is pattern and what is a pattern and what what is its function in in, in a specific artwork. Uh, that's unit. That was unit two. Uh, unit one. We continue with unit. Two, examine and demonstrate how to draw pictures. So in this specific unit, we are going to go a little bit faster. We are not going to go slide by slide because uh, we might be running out of time. And how? The phrase picture is worth a thousand words in education. Mm. So this specific phrase, you need to read to understand 
what it means a picture is worth a thousand word one single picture in education refer to an education not to other stories when we teach junior primary schools you will realize that you use a lot of pictures in every subject pictures play an important role we say that pictures are visual stimulus then you continue reading more explanation is found in your book in other words kindergarten books grade zero books pre-primary you, you you see that this book contains more pictures than writing and as the grades grows uh, are growing from grade one two three four pictures are becoming to start what they get lazier and the writing are becoming more so in a way that you are you develop a learner's mind to read and understand from pictures before you can introduce them to to to, to, to the words but i want you to read this specific phrase in your book also collecting pictures for your themes when you start to collect your pictures you will need some guidance of what to look for although the theme should be familiar topic for the learners there are always learners who need a picture to understand what you are talking about meaning that if you are teaching about houses or families or something you must have pictures that have the contents that are displaying families. You don't teach families, uh, human families, and you bring kettles and all those kind of things. You need to, 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 to bring, to collect pictures that actually make sense uh, depending on the, on, on the theme that you are teaching. And you just read there, there's more examples of, uh, of, uh, of themes also and how you can relate to, to, to those themes when you are collecting pictures. Um, there are some examples of themes, there are uh, phonic pictures, every language will have its own phonic words. You can start by collecting pictures of all the beginning sounds in English, but also in your other mother language, uh, because not all of us are English, or maybe not uh, lessons are, are presented in English. That's why they said in English or in your mother language. There are also caroling pictures. Crying in activities are great for hand eye practice. Remember, crying in pictures, the, 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 the book already have presented some outlined drawings. Some are dots, dots, with dots only when, uh, where, where, whereby Elena had to, to, to connect the dots and then later color in. Some are with a solid line, but they are just outlines. They are not yet uh, developed. So the learners, you provide them with the colors and that is when you they, they start now caroling in so it serves as also a good for for hand eye training it does not involve much of a creativity because the image is already there it's only for them to to color in and that is when they bring in their emotions of the, depending on the colors that they feel connected to it develops the fine motor muscle so and they continue reading from your iol book uh, tools necessary for painting now we know this painting is not painting of walls. This is painting of learners in your art class. So meaning that you need uh, art tools that uh, are user friendly to the children, small brushes and also paints that are not uh, harmful, that they cannot harm uh, 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 cause injuries to themselves when they are working. There are tools you will use if we will be influenced by the budget of the school. That's why it's it just to, 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 to let you know that sometimes you require too much to do an act, uh, art activity, but uh, at a certain point, these tools, because they are a lot and you can always use anything to, 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 to paint, at this specific uh, point, you are guided that it's, it's, it must be guided by the school budget so that you don't uh, go and look for expensive paints. That's why we recommend tempera. Tempera paint is the powder paint that you see uh, in most um, uh, color shops and even some schools that have already acquired them. Uh, it's powder where you just mix with water and it's very uh, affordable to, 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 to get. Okay, and the basic colors of Tempera, those are the, just the, 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 the list of what type of these colors are. I hope you are able to read that and just get... Handling materials also in a class, that means you need to set up rules in your class. 
so that like, because Selena is a special, is the youngest, two or four to seven, they get excited when they will see colors and brushes, they want to paint themselves and all that stuff. So here you are guided on how to, to handle these uh, specific materials in your art class. That means you should lose in class, are important, appoint learners to help you with uh, various tasks. This can be part of the duty charter, your class. It's not necessary to give, so just read this, read and as a teacher in the making or already or already a teacher be able to relate yourself to these specific situations huh? okay the color theory color is one of the elements of art that has high value especially for the young learners in namibia curriculum namibian curriculum color falls under the preparatory uh, preparatory math mathematics in pre-primary and must be introduced systematically throughout the year the nine colors which we introduce are red. It's obvious, red, blue, and yellow. Those are the primary colors. Green, orange, and purple, those are what? Those are the, 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 the secondary uh, colors. Let's say if you mix uh, red and blue, you get purple. Red and yellow, you get, um, uh, red and yellow, you get green. And the uh, red and the yellow, you get orange brown, pink, and so on. You will introduce one uh, color per theme and use a variety of strategies to do, the, to do so. So what does that mean? Meaning that you must, you yourself as a teacher, you need to be creative here and put up some uh, uh, um, uh, steps that uh, of how you can uh, introduce these colors per theme. The color wheel is built up by only three basic colors, as I have stated before. Three basic colors are blue, yellow, and red. Those are primary colors. And the mixtures of two primary colors gives you a secondary color. And then the mixture of two secondary colors gives you a tertiary color. So read through that and see how does that happen. Uh, perspective in drawing, a very important um, uh, area of uh, art education in primary uh, schools. Perspective is a principle of art on its own. Geometrical perspective, also known as a linear perspective, makes subject in a drawing look like they recede, like they um, pull up or they are far also. Just the illusion that you see within the specific uh, uh, drawing, that is what uh, is referred as um, or to linear perspectives, appealing more or rather geometrical perspective also create the illusion that you are either above or below the subject or that. Using the uh, geometrical uh, uh, perspective makes your drawing appear three-dimensional rather than flat. Flat is when it does not have any image, when it does not have any shades. So it does not stand out, there is no depth in it, there is nothing in it. So it's, uh, with you now this uh, perspective in drawing comes with a very important uh, perspective uh, um, terminologies that you should know when you are studying all perspective studies. One of these uh, studies is a horizon line, is a perspective line, an angular line, and a vanishing point. So you need to read these uh, specific uh, uh, perspective studies uh, in your book, one by one, understand what a horizon line is about, and it functions as a what perspective lines, angular, and so on, so that you 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 get to know the the, the meaning and you be able to to identify and to to also relate if you happen to meet a specific information somewhere else. Read more on the terminologies and what each represents. Uh, critic uh, painting. <coughs> Art criticism is how to criticize an artwork. This is the last category of art and it links with art appreciation. Art critic is not judging, therefore we never say that we like or we don't like the specific artwork. You say that, you say what you see, so you describe, analyze, and interpret. In other words, art criticism, you don't take criticize to find a mistake in a specific artwork and say here it was done wrong or here it was done right. But you rather, <coughs> you look in the artwork and you start describing what you see in the artwork. Is it a painting? How was it done? And you, 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 you give your, your description as a such without the uh, um, uh, um, judging the specific artwork to find whether it's wrong or right or something but that's why they said you need to you say 
what you see. You tell what you see your eyes. Are you seeing a mistake, perhaps? I don't think so, but you are seeing a specific artwork that was made. So your analysis and your description, and you interpret what you see according to what you have uh, uh, presented with you. So in doing so, there are four steps to follow when you want to critique a drawing or a painting. Number one of those steps is the description. What is the description about? What do I see? What do you see in a specific artwork? Study the work in details carefully, only then you will be able to tell what you see. Describe the artwork in full details. Be factual. Be able to, to tell, don't tell what is not there. That is what it means. Mention everything you see. You don't need to philosophize about these things. You need to look at the artwork and you tell what you see on that specific artwork. You, the another step is also to analyze how is the artwork organized. Look for and talk about the elements and the, the principles of art. How were they used? How are the lines, the tones, uh, the shapes and forms plus the patterns and others were used in this uh, while the artist was creating these specific artworks? So there are more steps, but here you are only given to the description, the analysis. That's why it says continue reading on those specific steps. There are more that are left. Okay. We are still on painting. How do we involve learners in painting? How do you make learners be part of the specific painting activity? How do you get them involved? Remember, you are supposed to be teaching and you are using the learner-centered approach, meaning that learners should engage. It's about what the learner should achieve with this specific uh, 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 activity and it's for you to facilitate them while they are executing that specific uh, activity. So how do you involve them? When you look at the last unit or the syllabus for art, you will see that appreciation is part. So this specific unit we are talking about, we are referring to the last unit in your book, your IOL book, especially for those that are using the DJP e-book. Uh, appreciation is one of the what? Of the of, of, of the, the competences there. Okay, this means, it means that um, it forms a part of uh, uh, that specific appreciation. It, 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 it forms a part of assessment competences in art. And uh, I think we will be able to touch that once we reach that specific uh, um, unit. You must teach, you must, you as a teacher must always strive to build up on the prior knowledge. Prior knowledge, that means what the child already know of all the skills and the know how that learner will need in order to, to, to solve a multitude of problems. That means prior knowledge, that means as a teacher, you need to establish, you need to find out what is it that the learner already know. Only then you will be able to continue after, because only when you know what they already know, then you will be able to again know what you sh where or where you should uh, start or what they need in order to, to, to solve those uh, multitude of problems that are stated. An art uh, activity lesson can be divided into to the following steps. So we have got some steps here. There's uh, preparation, motivation, and problem uh, identification. There's a step two practice, experiment, and uh, or lesson planning. So during uh, preparation, motivating, uh, motivation, what happens there? You need to read that description there. Practice and experiment or lesson planning, what happens there? You need to, 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 to read and understand that statement. And also continue because uh, those are not the only steps. I think there are four steps. That means there are four, I mean there are two steps left. How to develop learners' uh, self-image, communication, and a group word skills. Art is an, is an inherited characteristic of, you, of all humans. We are born with the ability to express ourselves, born with the ability as long as it's a birthright. Even those are mutes who cannot talk, they are still have got an ability to use their hands in order to, 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 to express themselves. Although we will not do it, that's why it says, although it's not done in the same way uh, or with the same amount of skill, we all, we, we can all do it. It's also true for the less, uh, for the learners in the class. So you are given that phrase or that specific scenario to understand that 
we are all have got this ability even if we don't talk we have the ability to talk but maybe we just need some boosting some guidance on so that we learn how to be practical and maybe to express more uh, ourselves and that is now in general this is where you can make or break a learner a powerful tool i would say art can encourage learners and allow them to speak with colors and creativeness when they cannot put it in their own so we are referring to art how can art develop self that's why they are talking of colors here and also how uh, learners can uh, use colors or drawings to, 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 to be able to express what they cannot say in their words. Now there are specific steps that you as a teacher should follow in order to help and develop a positive image within a letter, a a letter. One of those steps is uh, foster feelings of belonging, be a role model to that specific uh, uh, um, um, a, a, a learner, Foster a, a can-do attitude, that means instill that specific pride in a learner. The learner should be able to be confident and feel that, yes, I can do this. You need to instill that. Also, identify the strength, and know what the child's strengths are and what their weaknesses are. Also. And also, the steps are just a lot. That's why there's a quantity uh, a red flag there. That means find more on those steps and then be able to tell. Art can also help to develop self-image, communication, and group work. Learners, art, especially a drawing, represents one of the delights of childhood. The learner artistic interviews are mainly produced by pressure and by explanation art media. They can also be used for developmental and therapeutic assessments. Learners draw obviously also all these a theory that you must be able to read and understand not for assessment purposes not for your assignment purposes not for your exam purposes not for you but for your everyday life as, as a as a human being i would say okay also uh there are some points here that you should uh, you should read art creates creative problem solving skills at service as an organizer so this is um, some of the the, the, the values of uh, how art can help the, um, a child to, to, to develop self-image and their group work just read on them and do that with understanding uh, when getting practical what is practical getting practical being involving your hands now and the materials of art to make specific artworks. There are four recommended methods that can be used for guiding learning in art, modeling or demonstrating, providing descriptive feedback, explaining to help organize learners' thoughts, ask questions to extend learners' ideas, and understanding. You know, learner cannot just say, I want to draw a woman. Ask why a woman, then the learner will be able to tell you, isn't it? Okay, we are unit three, clarify and demonstrate how to make models, shape and structure in the natural and man-made world. And the first statement there, it's a quote by the Georgia, I think it's a leader. I found, I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way. Things I had no words for. It's just another way of, uh, of expression that they see way able to, to, to tell or to express herself uh, by using colors only without mentioning any word, but using colors and shapes only. I think that is the right uh, some interpretation to, to that specific, uh, to that specific um, uh, 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 phrase. All of you know that uh, when you look at a shape, you will not always get the same feeling. There is a very big variety of shapes and forms, which uh, and and the forms, and each of them has a characteristic, characteristics uh, which we can use to communicate different messages. Now, learn about these uh, three different uh, types of, uh, of, of of shapes: geometrical shapes. These are the circles, the squares, 
uh, so on. Natural uh, organic shapes, these are the irregular ones. Uh, they are more curves and are uneven. The abstract ones, they are recognizable forms. And I think those ones that you can, uh, <coughs> especially when you are in the malls there, when you want to, to go to the, to the bathrooms, you see this uh, a lady, it's just a, a form of uh, um, a shape that is uh, put there and you are able to tell that uh, this side is for men and this side is for, for ladies. The value of uh, creative activities such as modeling. Modeling in this case is not for fashion, not for clothes, but it's for using clay or tell or dwarf or what is that colorful stuff that you use in a class where student or learners are able to mold the shapes of cows and that is the modeling that we are using um, looking forward to so what is the importance what is the quality of this clay also allows learners to learn to repair mistake it breaks when they are doing and they are able to put to fill it up that is actually what it means but i hope you are able to read all these benefits of, uh, of that specific activity. Just read them. How to involve learners in modeling activity, just like we were talking about uh, involving learners in painting activities. So the difference is that that was a painting activity and this one is a modeling activity. So you need to look at the, at the different uh, uh, um, modeling activities that are mentioned here, like the pitch pot and the, the slow pot and the coil pot and be, be able to differentiate and how learners can be able to make those uh, specific uh, activities. Uh, unit four, illustrate and clarify construction, constructing and collage work. Constructing not for houses, and it's for houses, but mini houses that uh, learners need boxes and scissors to cut and glue to paste while they are making their little houses. Box constructions is an activity. So there are two types of box constructions that the junior primal area learners can do. And they say they are all fun. So it's not a boring activities. They will be loving to do this. That's why you need to collect the boxes of all uh, sizes and let learners sort them out to, to, while they are going to, to do it. How to involve learners in constructing activity how to in learn, uh, involve learners in collage activity. This collage now is cutting and pasting. Collage is just another word of pasting. So we talked of uh, involving learners in painting activity, in uh, modeling activity, in construction activity, and now in collage activities. So you need to know the differences of, of between those activities and how you can learn uh, or how you can involve learners in those uh, specific activities. Making your own teaching material for junior primary school teaching. First, teaching material, you need are posters. You will need thin posters as well as teaching posters. These teaching posters, which you will need, are as follows. So there's a list of teaching posters there, the numbers and the colors and so on. That's why it says continue. In your book, you'll be able to find them. Number five, as uh, discuss the aspect of teaching and assessing art creations. Preparation before class. Read that. While managing order in the class. So you need to prepare before the class, you yourself as a teacher, because learners, they will come there and they will not have a chance. That's why you need the rules as we stated before, but you need to prepare yourself in advance as a teacher so that you are able to control them. And that's why the while managing at class is also there. So you need to read this, the rules and all these type of uh, things from your book. And then the material for art room, also paint and brushes. That is just what do you need in your art class for your art lessons. So if it's a painting, what do you need? That's why they talk of uh, painting brushes there. And then the last uh, unit is the uh, unit six, which is about now examining and the teaching, uh, the teaching and the learning activities uh, uh, materials for grade one to three. That's why participation is here as the first theme of art. And it's a competence is only its own. So you need to, when you refer to participation in grade one, two, or three, how do learners get involved? How do they work together? Actually, participation, it's about working together. What is, what is your, your, your part? What role do you play in a group that you are part of when you are working? So refer now to this, to the guidance provided in your book under each and every specific grade. And here are very important uh, groceries, just some terminologies we used in the 
in the in, in, in the presentation that we feel that maybe you will be able to we should assist you just to, 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 to list them out and be able to give you a description of what each means, which are very important and you should do that with each and every terminology that you find there. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. And now I want just to, to let you know about this specific presentation. It's a presentation that was composed or put together from your IOLs provided study materials, being it a Kindle or the DPP book or the GAP book. And it's, uh, it's covering the contents that you need for your 20, uh, 2020 assessment works. What are your 2020 assessment works? You have got an assi assignment there. The first one is due on the 15th of January. That is the first phase of the assignment. And I think the other one is uh, due in the middle of the year. You have got also three different exams there, including the, including the, 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 the April exam, uh, the August, and also the November, if I'm not mistaken. So this specific presentation, it's rounding up all those uh, assessment tools. So it's very important for you to acquire this specific uh, presentation, download it, print it out, and summarize it from your book. And then you will be able to, 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 to go ahead with the confidence that you are on the right track of completing your course.